So in the previous video, we saw what the data path is and how that relates to a uh, high level state machine. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about the rest of the circuit um, that's required to uh, implement our high level state machines. So we're going to keep working with this example that we've been working with in most of the videos recently, this uh, pulse counter machine. If you remember, this is the high level diagram that we took a look at. Uh, it consists of two major pieces, the state machine, as well as the data path that's represented by this register down here. And we can see that the state machine and the data path have to interact with one another uh, in order to implement the high-level state machine. In the last video, we actually took a look at the data path. So that's this section down here at the bottom. And we see that the data path has uh, really three inputs. N, that's what this is up at the top. And then we have a select bit for our multiplexer and a load bit uh, then for our load register. So this load corresponds to input B of our data path, and this minus 1 uh, corresponds to the select bit of this multiplexer it's choosing from either the N input or the um, counter minus 1 input that we have here. So that's implementing this bottom section of our uh, circuit. Uh, we now need to turn our attention to the top portion of this circuit, the state machine. The good news is that constructing the state machine is going to be pretty much the same process that we saw when we were constructing state machines in the previous uh, section of this course. Um, we just need to take a couple of things into account. Specifically, um, we see these two inputs coming into the state machine as well as this output coming out of the state machine. Uh, but the state machine also needs to incorporate um, these outputs and this input from the data path. So the state machine now is responsible for managing inputs and outputs to the data path as well as the overall inputs and outputs from the uh, high-level state machine itself. Um, so with that in mind, our process is going to be the same. We're going to construct a transition table, uh, choose an encoding, for example, either binary or one-hot encoding, and um, then try to derive equations for uh, all of the outputs, making sure to include uh, the outputs to the uh, data path as well as the overall outputs. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Here is a transition table and you'll notice that under the inputs I have D in listed which is an input to our finite state machine but I also have this count equals zero input um, which is coming from the data path. This is necessary for this particular finite uh, high-level state machine because if you look we are only going to decrease the counter if the counter is not equal to zero. So that's what's specified right here. So we need to have a way of telling whether the counter is equal to zero that determines whether we should decrement the counter or not. And so this input to our state machine is actually coming from the data path. It's not a true input to the high level state machine, but we do need to include it on our, on our uh, transition uh, table. So here is our current state. You can see I've chosen to use a binary encoding for this particular machine. So that's four different states that we have, uh, two different flip-flops. And then our outputs, you'll notice that the outputs that I have listed here are A and B. Those are the outputs that go to our data path. So the actual event output in this particular case is very easy. The event output is whatever this count equals zero value is that's coming into the state machine. So that's a very easy output. I, therefore, I omitted it from this table. Um, if we wanted to be uh, extra complete, we probably would have included that output on this table. Uh, but I omitted it for conciseness. Um, and then finally, we see the next state uh, um, bits that are set over here. And so just like we did before, we're going to construct equations for all of our outputs. So in this case, we need equations for A and B, as well as our next state, S0 and S1, as well as the other output that's not included on this table, which is uh, the event output. You'll notice that a lot of these values over here for the count equals zero, right? We don't care about them. We only actually care about them when we're in a particular state. So that makes creating these equations, deriving these equations, quite a bit uh, easier uh, and simpler. Let's take a look at what those equations are. So we see here's our next states, so S0 and S1. Those are pretty straightforward. We've seen things like that before. The event output that's not listed on this table is going to be equal to Z. Z is what I'm calling this count equals zero uh, part of the table. Over here, we have the equations for A and B. 
So we can see that A is based on being in this first state. B then is based on being in this first state or uh, being in a certain transition of this very last state down here that depends on uh, Z, that depends on count equals zero. And so we, we have equations for these outputs that are going to the data path. And now we can construct our circuit, just as we've been constructing circuits based off these equations um, all semester long. Here, then, is what that circuit would look like. We see our inputs over here on the left, right? We see our outputs over here to the data path on the right. And then the actual output itself, event, is over here as well. So that is the implementation of this top part of this circuit diagram, this top part here, the state machine itself. Um, it would then need to be connected to, of course, the data path in order to form the complete circuit. So the outputs A and B that we see here would need to be connected to A and B here, and the output of the data path Z here would need to be connected to the input of this uh, finite state machine Z here in order to form the complete circuit for this high-level state machine. In the next video, we'll talk about timing considerations uh, when dealing with circuits for high-level state machines.